So I think we, what would for us, I think what we need to do is go back to that day in 1945. And how did he escape? So uh, what do you believe happened? Let me just set up a few things, right? The last pictures of Adolf Hitler in history, and I, I, I use the word history here in inverted commas, are of him um, meeting a group of Hitler youth in Berlin on April 20th um, and giving them um, iron crosses. Now, every historian in the world says that's Adolf Hitler. It was done on April the 20th. Well, some limited research, and it didn't take very long, found out that those pictures actually came from a Hitler Youth magazine published on April the 20th, 1945. The pictures were shot on March the 20th, 1945. The historians can't even get this bit right. I had those pictures forensically looked at by the head of... Um, medical physics at a major London university, and he proved beyond a doubt that it's simply not Adolf Hitler. He checked it against pictures that were issued by um, the Reich's ministry, propaganda ministry during World War II of Adolf Hitler, and of occasions when um, Hitler met various visiting dignitaries from around the world where it would not have been a double involved. So the man in the last pictures of Adolf Hitler um, supposedly shot on April the 20th are not Adolf Hitler. They are a double. So how many doubles did, did Hitler actually have? Did he have many or was just this one it was guy? It's common for people to, in that, in that, to have doubles. I think Churchill had doubles. A lot of leaders did. Um, Churchill had doubles. I mean, in the, um, the film The Eagle Has Landed, Nazis are after one of Churchill's doubles in that. Montgomery, you know, the, the, head, of British, the head of the British Army, effectively, in World War II. Monty had a, a double. I mean, there's even a black and white film out there called I Was Monty's Double. Um, Stalin had doubles. I mean, you know, in later times, I mean, Saddam Hussein had doubles. I met one. <laughs> really? I met one, the, I met one in the coffee bar at the Al Rashid Hotel in Baghdad after Gulf War II. Um, he was looking for work. Um, no way. I couldn't find one. Any <laughs> I wasn't looking. But I mean, I went to an international lookalikes competition um, in Latvia once while I was waiting for the Russians to pull out of uh, the Baltic states. And there was running an international um, lookalike competition. I interviewed both Lenin brothers. Everybody had a flipping double. I don't think it'd be too difficult to be a Hitler double as well. Like, you know, you get the moustache, you get the hair. I don't think it's a really hard one to pull off. Yeah. No, I mean, you know, there, there are distinct distinct things you would look for in Adolf Hitler. One is the really bad haircut. The second one is the crappy moustache, which he only wore to hide um, a scar from World War I. Um, we had a scar on the top of his lip. Um, that's why he wore that moustache. And, it, and it's different now because we have so, so much access to photography and like videos of people. Like It's so hard to have a double back then. You got one weekly newspaper about Adolf Hitler. If you're in the UK, once a month, once every two months. Yeah, so, you know, so they, get, you might get some captured German newsreel being shown in the cinemas, very um, heavily edited. But yeah, I mean, these weren't like everybody will recognise Donald Trump. Um, yeah, you know, from the mango face to the um, <laughs> small oh, come over, the small mammalian creature he has on his head, which goes there. <laughs> <laughs> So okay, I right, sorry, sorry, Jared. So we're, we're in Berlin, and so we're in Berlin. March the twentieth is the last time that Hitler is actually seen in public. Um, before his his birthday is April the twentieth, and he's seen by a lot of senior Nazis at that stage. So let's say he's still Berlin, still in Berlin, in April the twentieth. We have the the testimony from the pilot who flew him out um, just before the bunker fell. And um, he flew him out to um, an airfield in um, what was still occupied Denmark then. There were 300,000 Nazi troops on the ground in Denmark at the end of the war. He flew him out to an airfield in, in Denmark. Um, and this all comes out in a Polish court in is, the 1950s. Is this Peter Bangard? Yeah, it's Peter Bangard. So his story is quite interesting because you said he, he was trialed as a Nazi in Poland in Warsaw. Yeah, they thought he'd been a guard at Auschwitz or um, a guard in one of the concentration camps. Um, so he was he was put on trial in Warsaw. He said, I'm actually a pilot. I flew Adolf Hitler out. I'm keeping it simple here. Um, mm -hmm. And the Polish judge said, you're insane. Sent him back to um, jail for psychological testing. The psychological testing all said, 
this guy thinks he's telling the truth. Um, and then they released him. And at that stage, I thought that Baumgart had disappeared into history. Um, he didn't. He was taken by the Americans and um, he flourished in America. And his son actually flew jets in Vietnam, um, which isn't in Grey Wolf because that's only something I, I discovered later. But um, and he stayed with it, stuck with his story. Um, it, yeah, because I think the last time I heard you talk, it was about Peter Bangard. It was it was you, he went to America and his destination was the State Department. And then you basically couldn't find any information after. The State Department paid for him to go over over there um, from, from a flight in Germany. And we've got his arrival documents in um, in the US and a uh, very good researcher tracked him down and tracked his son down. And his son had flown with the U.S. Air Force. Have you had the privilege of talking to his son, or like maybe reaching out? As far as I'm concerned, the Baumgart thing is, um, well, it's it as reported. I mean, it's reported by Reuters and the Associated Press at the time. And um, my researcher talked to his son. And he said, "Yeah, my dad sticks to his story. I don't believe him, but my dad sticks to his story, and he's dead now. Not not the son, but the guy is dead." Mm-hmm. But, you know, we then have um, stuff in Newsweek at the time from their correspondent on the ground with the Soviets, who the Soviet colonel in charge of looking for Hitler and his body takes the Newsweek reporter to a hidden panel in the Reich Chancellery in Hitler's private quarters, which leads down to an underground bunker, which leads down to the underground railway in Berlin. And he shows him a note, which he thinks is probably written by Ava Brown to her parents, saying it's partially burnt, saying that she won't be able to see them for some time. Um, That fits in with Baumgart picking them up near an underground station and flying them out of Berlin. Uh, We have, once they're in Argentina, that there are just report after report after report. And they are never, they're all at, at different places at different times. They're not all at different places at the same time. It's not yeah. like there's a Hitler hysteria going on. Um, and, you know, people think that, you know, maybe a couple of hundred senior Nazis or Nazis escaped to Argentina after the war. It's closer to 100,000 European fascists got out. Jesus. So he gets the he gets he gets to Denmark and he, he goes to Spain, is it? Yeah, and he flies down to his friend, General Franco. Um, flies into an airport just outside Barcelona, about 80 kilometers outside of Barcelona. I think EasyJet fly in there now. <laughs> um, and from there, he, the plane is taken apart that flew him, flew him out, so there's no hard evidence. And he gets on a, a Spanish Air Force aircraft, which flies into Puerto Ventura on the Canary Islands um, to a place called Villa Winter. And off Villa Winter, there are three submarines of the last U boat pack um, called Sea Wolf, interestingly enough. Um, one of those submarines he boards, and those three submarines take him to Argentina, along with um, Ava Brown, uh, or Ava Hitler, as she's meant to be then, although Mm. there's no proof that the marriage certificate is real from the bunker, Um, and her brother-in-law, SS General Hermann Fagelein, who also isn't dead in the bunker, um, or executed by Hitler. 